Hello, and welcome to Wallace's Mysteries of Antiquity. Subscribe to the channel to join me in exploring the enigmas of our distant ancestors and try to come to tentative conclusions about them. The title isn't clickbait. I've spent the past week or so gathering information and thinking about these new, new, results. I don't just want to point out problems with their technique or that they're kind of conspiracy people. I wanted to theorize about exactly what was in the data because despite everything else, there does appear to be something in the data. And I think I've solved it. I have a hypothesis that can explain absolutely everything we see here. Why there are exactly five anomalies inside the pyramid and their positions. What these deep structures under the pyramid are. And why they terminate about 1,500 feet deep in a big cavity thing. I can even answer ancient architect's question of how you go from the data to the structures. I'm not saying my theory is right, but my theory explains things better than theirs, in my opinion at least. Okay, so if you have no idea what I'm talking about, recent news has claimed there were massive structures found within and underneath Khafre's pyramid. I don't want to spend time talking about that. I'd recommend watching Ancient Architect's video on the paper and the experiment. It's linked below. For information on Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR, technology itself, I'd recommend this video by Scott Manley I remembered seeing years ago. He carefully explains the entire process and its capabilities and limitations. Something he mentioned in that video is what lit the light bulb in my brain. It's essentially an ultra-high resolution surface radar, and the team is using some unknown process to extrapolate 3D data from it. I will explain only the necessary parts of the technology to explain my hypothesis. Ready? Let's go. These are the wavelengths of the most common types of SAR. Keep this 1 to 100 centimeter length in your mind. Anything smaller than that is essentially invisible to it, which is why it can see through things like weather and foliage. Anything larger than that will bounce the radar back to the sensor and give you a data point. With one exception. If the radar beam hits a flat surface that's wider than the wavelength, it will reflect it like a mirror, providing either zero data or irregular data, especially where two flat planes meet. This is the underlying fundamentals of stealth technology. This is the surface of Saturn's moon Titan through SAR. You'll notice a huge black splotch at the top. That's a methane lake. The reason it's black is because the radar sensor is getting zero data from this location. The radar beam goes down, reflects off of the flat surface, and disappears into space without ever returning to the radar. This is New York City. Looking closely, you might have some privacy concerns, but fear not. I assure you, SAR cannot actually see through buildings. All of that noise is actually the radar beam bouncing around the flat surfaces of the building and creating artifacts. So flat surfaces create anomalies in the data, especially where two of them meet. And we know this team found five anomalies inside the Khafre Pyramid. Hmm. 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 I predict you'll have five anomalies in the data caused by reflections from the smooth casing stones on the top of the pyramid. One for each location where two mirror-like planes meet. In the same location as the five quote-unquote structures they found inside the pyramid. In the proof of concept that ancient architects talked about, where they successfully detected a pair of tunnels and the Grand Sasso Physics Lab, 
there were no flat surfaces. This is what the top of that mountain looks like. The absolute best case scenario for SAR. I propose they have not encountered these kinds of reflections yet and didn't understand what they were looking at. I also wonder if this image is p-hacked. I believe there are likely parameters in their software that they had to fine-tune in order to see the structures they already knew were there. But if you don't know what you're looking for, how can you fine-tune these parameters? Giza at the water table will need very different parameters than a huge mountain high up in the Alps. This is what a star, which is a single point, looks like if the telescope is out of focus. That's what it'd be like using the wrong parameters in your analysis software. So what about these eight deep structures? Well, another thing the Alps is missing is sand. Sand is actually semi-transparent to SAR. It can pass through a few meters of it, so when scanning over sand with SAR, you're actually looking at the bedrock underneath it through the sand, assuming the sand's not too deep. So, awesome, right? Sand is no issue? Well, what happens when the radar beam transitions between the air and sand? You get refraction. I have a feeling the team did not account for this either, because they certainly wouldn't have had to looking through a mountain in Italy. I think we are getting the SAR equivalent of this. This is the bottom of a swimming pool, as seen from above the water. This is equivalent to looking at the bedrock under the sand from a satellite with radar. We already know from ground-penetrating radar that there are cavities underneath the pyramid. And in my video on the well shaft, I showed you an enormous fissure where the entire plateau had cracked for hundreds of feet. The Giza bedrock is between 25 and 50 million years old. And while that's fairly young for limestone, I asked experts in the geology subreddit and they unanimously agreed that what they called cursed formations would inevitably form inside of it with the huge Nile River right there. It should be absolutely crisscrossed with caves. But the nice folks at r slash geology had one other interesting thing to say that I didn't know. At a certain depth, the pressure is so great that voids simply get crushed and it becomes impermeable to water. So the groundwater can no longer penetrate. There are large cavities above this where the water bottoms out. So what does this mean for us? Well, let's put what's proposed right next to a cross-section of typical limestone and scale everything to be the same. What they claim are huge cubic rooms at the bottom is basically the bottom of the bedrock, where large aquifers form. All of these structures are at the same depth as the average cave system in limestone, which tend to be mostly vertical. And if they are looking at data that's distorted by refraction, you might end up with some wild-looking things. But that does raise the question, where did this geometry come from? How did they go from the raw data to the geometry they showed us? Well, Filippo has a GitHub account. And while poking around the code repositories, I think I found the SDK he used for this process. Now, an SDK is not the actual analysis software. It's a framework. But I have to believe he built something this complicated for a reason. And this is just the type of framework you'd need to start doing this large data analysis. It appears to be able to take raw data, push it through a neural network, and get geometry as an output. Now, there is nothing inherently wrong with using AI for this. Pulling out and interpreting subtle patterns in absurdly huge data sets is precisely what neural networks are really, really good at. But most scientists 
use it as a way to find anomalies that are worth then having the human researcher look at and perform rigorous science on. They do not use AI in their final paper. AI is already extremely prone to hallucinations when it has data that very closely matches its training data. But that training data is super important because if an AI is trained on data that has no reflections or refractions in it, it's not going to understand them. So that's what I think this is. These five tall chambers inside the pyramid are what the AI thinks the anomalies caused by the reflections from the casing stones on the top are. These are natural caves reaching down 1,500 feet or so, being seen through a refraction pattern from the sand. This is inevitable for any huge slab of limestone that's old enough. Limestone just does that. The AI has never seen refraction before and hallucinated this. And this is the interface to the Aquiatard sub-bedrock where groundwater has eroded large channels. Also being seen through a refraction pattern and interpreted by an AI that's never been trained for it. Thank you for listening. Let me know if you agree with my proposal or if you think there is something else going on here. And subscribe if you wish to continue to explore the enigmas of our distant ancestors with me.